so so for example uh, if we look at the, the the if you have a radial symmetry of the density profile and you actually radio expand as the system expands uh, through hydrodynamic equations uh, they were basically uh, serve as a push to the particles as emits on the hypersurface, which is indicated as this uh, black solid line here. So you can think about these as like people surfing on the sea and the sea basically the water pushed the people to get the larger velocities. And this Lorentz boost um, factor is, is hiding these uh, exponential factors uh, in, the, in the particle dis or Boltzmann distribution factor, P dot P mu U mu factor. So here is basically the boost effects um, uh, from from the relative radial flow uh, from the fluid. So for slight particles like pions, you will get the relativistic boost. So your temperature or the slope of your particle spectrum will be very look like a, a, a relativistic blue shades. And for protons, uh, the, the mass of the proton is actually much larger than temperature. You are sitting in the non-relativistic regime. So basically you just have the momentum addition to, to, your, to your temperatures in there. So this actually can be actually checked um, in terms of numerical simulations and compared with the data. So experiments like Alice actually measured uh, very precisely the particle spectrums for different types of particles with different mass. So here black line you know, shows the pions and then the red line is k on and then green is the uh, protons. And then there's also heavier, heavier mass than, than the protons like psi, lambda, and the deltas. So as you can see from the calculations that uh, the, with the single hydrodynamic simulations, you can describe all these uh, different species of particles um, um, simultaneously. So the lower panel show you the ratio between the theory calculations and, and experiments. As you can see for the low PT below two GeVs, ish, you can see that the ratio is remain about uh, within 30% from unity, which means that the hydrodynamic descriptions of the spectrum is really good. Uh, actually controlled by this uh, blue shift of the radial flow from the hydrodynamic flow. So the hydrodynamic radial flow give you the precisely uh, the different blue shift for different species of particles according to their different mass. And this represents that there is a simultaneous description of the particle, the uh, particle, a zoo of species of particles inside uh, from experiments. So, so you can also look at the elliptic flow coefficients, which here I plot V22. Now here, basically, you can look at it as a function of system size from, from bigger system like uranium uranians or lead lead in, uh, in the RIC or the lead lead case uh, for, the, for the HC case. And then you can even extrapolate to even smaller sim uh, systems like intermediate size, like uh, these isobar simulations or these very small system like P gold and PP collisions. And you can actually see that the uniform uh, framework, uh, basically using one transport pro, pro, uh, coefficients can actually describe a large class of the uh, measurement of V2 in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this comparison with the data. So this is actually show you the success that uh, the hydrodynamics can not only uh, describe uh, one data points, but uh, multiple data points over two order of magnitude in terms of particle multiplicities. In the, in the experiments, both at the RIC and HC at the same time. So not only we can look at the mean value of the V2, there's also measurements uh, for the event by event distributions of the V2 uh, at different collision events. So here I show you um, the VN distributions uh, from measurements from Atlas and then compare with the, the state of art calculations from hydrodynamics with initial state conditions. You can see that um, the hydrodynamic descriptions actually give you a very good description of these VN coefficients, especially, for example, in the tail that uh, you actually can give you some hydrodynamic response, which is not present in the initial states, so that you actually need a hydrodynamic phase to get this tail of distribution in the, in the V4 in the semi peripheral collisions. So last but not least, you can also look at the angular distributions for the VN coefficients. So the VN, a different order N can, can come with a different phase in the, in the orientation in the transverse uh, uh, plane. So for example, V2 can go in these white, uh, white arrows, but the higher order VN, say V2, V3, and V4 can go in different directions. Whether to these two angles are correlated with each other, total randoms is a measurement that actually can be measured in experiments. 
And the experiment do show there's a non-zero correlations between different order of the event plane angles. For example, V2 and the V4 are actually strongly correlated through, through different centrality things. And you can also calculate these correlations from the hydrodynamic expansion simulations, and which is showing these red curves. And you can see that um, the hydrodynamic simulation actually captures both two part of two plane correlations as well as three uh, event plane correlations uh, rather well at, at LC energies. So these show you that the hydrodynamics can not only describe you quantitative VN coefficients, but also intrinsic correlations between event by event correlations between different other VNs in the, in the dynamical simulations. So now let me come to my conclusions. So I hope to convince